Within the appellation of Champagne, there are over 300 villagers permitted to label their wines as Champagne. These villagers are ranked based on the quality of the grapes that they produce, categorized into a three-tiered pyramid of Ultra Cru, Premier Cru, and Grand Cru. This ranking system was originally created in the early 20th century to differentiate the best grapes in the region. Originally, 12 villagers were given the title of Grand Cru. However, in 1985, a further five were added, bringing the total to 17. Notably, the Grand Cru of Champagne are almost exclusively located in the sub-regions of Montagne de Reims and Côte des Blancs, with only one, Aïe, falling outside in the Vallée de la Marne. For a wine to be labelled as a Grand Cru, it must contain 100% of grapes from Grand Cru villages. If it contains any grapes from Premier Cru villages, it can only be labelled as Premier Cru. Anything below Grand or Premier Cru can't boast either title on the label. So beyond, what's the difference between a Premier Cru and a Grand Cru? Over centuries, they've made a classification of the whole region. So we have about 314 different villages, and the top, you know, of the of the quality pyramid is 17 villages. So that's the Grand Cru, the best sites. And then we have 44 Premier Crus. So that's the second tier of the of the quality ladder. And uh, when it comes to to quality, can a Premier Cru be better than a Grand Cru? Of course, it's in the hand of the of the skills of the winemaker. So you can have a top top producer making super wine from a lesser known. Uh, origin and vice versa. Cool. And what makes the Grand Cru so special? You know, we talked about these 17 different origins and they are very different when it comes to exposure. If it's southern exposure to the sun to get a lot of, of um, maturity in the grapes, that's one factor that is very important when it comes to the Grand Cru's. The origin of the vineyards, how old they are, how uh, deep down in the soil that the root system goes and how it picks up, you know, a lot of elements during, you know, generations and generations. The vine is actually very much like a, like a human being. It learns a lot during its lifetime, you know, from the very specific place where it, uh, where it grows. So that's very important when it comes to Grand Cru's also to a certain grape variety has adapted, you know, uh, for hundreds and hundreds of years in a specific site like a Grand Cru. Also the drainage, how the water goes down in the system so the vine can, you know, pick up the water during the whole growing season. Exposure of the vineyard, of course, uh, those are the very specific, I would say, with the Grand Cru. All the Grand Cru are amazing on the same level. If you read a Grand Cru on the label, it gives you an indication that it's the top, top quality. But of course, uh, you can have your personal uh, ranking within these that I have. So there is a little bit of difference, although they have the same possibility because the whole of the village is ranked on the top tier. So uh, they are on the top level, but there are also you know, differences, absolutely. With your favorite Grand Cru? Ooh, that's a good question. There are so many. Uh, if we talk about Pinot Noir, I think three different Grand Cru's are great. So the IE for the power, the depth and the body. For Bouzy, for the perfume. You know, add a little bit of that on top, that's beautiful. And I absolutely love Ambonnet for the suppleness of it. And we're talking about the Chardonnay. I love the almond notes and nougat notes in Luminil. I love the acidity and finesse and, and power in Avis. And also there's a roundness in Choilly, which is absolutely beautiful. How Grand Cru should, should taste? We have a beautiful example in front of us. We have a Blanc de Noir from the village of Aïe, from Roger Brun. So this really shows, you know, the complexity, the concentration and the finesse. You know, if you have a scale from 1 to 100, if you have a wine from a Grand Cru, you will take almost 100 points on all the scales because you have so much layers, details and layers of different characters as we have in this. Grand Crus are more often than not the purest expressions of champagne. However, it's important not to discredit other champagnes. As the vast majority of champagnes are blends, winemakers will always choose the best grapes in a given vintage for their blends, regardless of their ranking. Try comparing different blends or single vineyard expressions to truly appreciate the diversity that this incredible region has to offer.